Welcome again. Right now in our readings, we are on John chapter 1, verse 29. This is a powerful, powerful verse. There's so much here to talk about just in the first chapter of John alone. Let's read this. The next day, he saw Jesus coming to him. This is talking about John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold. In other words, take notice. Look at this. Look. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay, this here is huge. This is huge, my friend. This is huge. Because you see, a lot of people today believe that Jesus came to just be so some nicey, goody two-shoe guy that just loves everybody and just excuses all of their sin. He doesn't see the sin. That's not what the scripture says. It doesn't. G, John the Baptist didn't say, Behold the Lamb of God who doesn't see the sin of the world. John the Baptist did not say, behold the Lamb of God who covers up the sin of the world. He said, look, here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay, he's not not talking about sweeping sin under the rug. Okay, he's talking about cleaning it up. Okay, and this is where a lot of people get it wrong. Why did Jesus die? Jesus died so that you can identify with, with his death. Jesus rose from the dead so that you can identify with his resurrection. Let me explain. If you are stuck, bound to sin, if you are a slave of, if you are a slave of sin, and I guarantee you, if you sin, you are a slave of sin. If you smoke, and you're in, you know, there's a habit of smoking, you, you are a slave to that sin. If you are an alcoholic, you are a slave to that. If you are addicted to drugs, you are a slave to that. If you are a kleptomaniac who steals everything all the time, you are a slave to that sin. If you are addicted to immoral behavior, you're, you're a slave to that sin. If you are you know, uh, a compulsive liar, you are a slave to that sin. It's, that sin has got you bound up, got you controlling you. When Jesus died, you are to look upon that death. You are to look upon him, you know, by faith, look upon him on the cross. As he died, as he said, it is finished. As he died, and he breathed his last, you are to say with Paul the Apostle, you are to say, as Paul the Apostle said in Galatians 2.20, 2, I am crucified with Christ. Okay? It doesn't say I'm Jesus died in my place. It says, I am crucified with him. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. That is what it's all about. If you, were, if you were to ask a knowledgeable Jewish rabbi today, what is the purpose of a sin sacrifice? They will tell you. That when you are in bondage to this certain sin, if you are held by a certain sin, if you are a slave to a certain sin, you go, you purchase your animal sacrifice. You purchase that lamb or whatever the case may be. You take that and you take it to the temple. And if it's acceptable, a spotless lamb, that priest is to accept it. And you are to stand there and you are to watch that animal being slaughtered. As the blood flows, you are to watch that blood draining out of that animal and saying, there goes the life of my sin. As you watch that animal die, there goes the life of my sin. There goes the life of my sinful lifestyle. There, there it goes. It just drain, The life is draining out. I'm dying to that sin. You are to connect with it. The whole idea of an animal sacrifice in the Old Testament, so-called Old Testament, is so that you can identify it, identify with it, so that your sin could be dealt with and taken away. In other words, the sacrifice was a catalyst for repentance. That's why 
over and over and over again, God said throughout the scriptures, your sacrifices, I don't want your sacrifice. It's not sacrifices I want. You think that I want sacrifice? Your sacrifices are a stench in my nostrils. Why? Because you're just sacrificing and you're not repenting. You're not connecting with it. The whole idea of the sacrifice is for you to connect with it, identify with it, and die with it. Okay? And so when that animal is sacrificed and when the, when the fat is burned on the altar, you are to look upon that and say, there goes the passion, the lust for my sin. That's why Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, that those who belong to Yeshua, those who belong to Jesus, those who are Mashiachs, those who are Christ's, have, not going to, not in the process of, but have crucified their sinful nature with his passions and desires. How? By looking upon the cross and saying, I am dead with Jesus. I died with Jesus. My sin, my sinful lifestyle, my lifestyle, the old man, so to speak, the old me is dead, gone. The old me that tries to justify sin is gone, dead. And I rose with Jesus in newness of life, born again to live a life of righteousness because you have the life of God in you now. You're not living an animalistic life anymore. You're not living a sinful life anymore. You're living a righteous life now. That's why John said in his, in his letters, in his epistles, it's impossible to be born again in sin. If you're truly born again, if you're truly born again, that means you've died to your sinful nature. You're dead to sin. And you're alive to Jesus. You're alive to Christ. You're alive to God by faith in his resurrection and knowing that you have the Spirit of God come into you and regenerate you, being born again in a perfect, righteous, you know, lifestyle that you live. Okay? So Jesus came to die so that we can identify with that death. He rose from the dead so that we can identify with that resurrection. So that we can say, all the old is gone and the new has come. I am born again. I have the Spirit of God living within me. The Holy Spirit. And may I just emphasize on the word holy because if you really do have the Holy Spirit in you, you will manifest holiness. Okay, very, very powerful. I'm going to leave you on that note. Do not forget the purpose of Mashiach was to come and lead many, lead many to repentance. Remember, he said, I come not for the righteous. There are the righteous. He said, I'm not, I didn't come for them. He didn't come for, for everybody. He come for the sinners, not to, just, just, not to justify their sin, not to, not to drink and party with them, not to sin with them, not to just hang out with them and just do what they're doing. No. He came to call them to repentance, he said. He said, I, don't, I have not come for the righteous, but I've come for the sinner to call them to repentance. That's what it's all about. Repentance of sin. Living holy, living just, living right, living godly in this world. May God give every one of you the power to do so. I ask God that he would call every one of you within the sound of my voice into his marvelous light. And I guarantee you, if you come into the kingdom of his light, no darkness survives in the light of God. Sin does not survive in the light of God. As you go, don't forget to live righteously, live holy, submit yourself to God, humble yourself under his mighty hand, and he will lift you up in due time. Thanks again for watching, and God bless you.